MTB's Music Meta 2017 coverage is sponsored by Plugin Boutique, the place for music plugins. plugins. Okay guys, my name is Rob Anderson, I'm the product planning specialist in for Pioneer DJ Europe and we're going to talk you through the latest addition to our Torres range for this uh, BPB video. So yeah, we launched the Torres SP16, our standalone sequencer and sampler in 2016, late 2016 and we've recently introduced our brand new monophonic synthesizer, the AS1, in partnership with Dave Smith Instruments. So a massive coup for us to be able to partner with the like legendary Dave Smith Instruments, you know, a, a company that's got huge heritage in uh, vintage synthesizers and anal pure analog synthesizers over the years. And what we've essentially done is what Pioneer tend to do well. We've taken something that might traditionally be quite hard uh, to, to do and made it very user friendly and made it easy to, to instantly get gratification from the hardware. So this is a, I've got some sounds running at the moment, you can hear I've, if I turn the AS1 down, I've got these basic this basic drum pattern running on the SP16 and I've actually got it set up so when I hit play on the SP16 it's sending a start stop signal to the AS1. Now this has got a 64 step channel, uh, 64 step sequencer inside the hardware. So I'm going to show you two ways of using it. I'm going to show you the heart, the sequencer inside here and the presets, uh, the sequences that have been assigned to each preset. And then I'm also going to show you MIDI tr being triggered from the pads on the SP16. So Dave Smith Prophet 6 is probably the most, uh, you know, it's responsible for maybe nine, uh, 80 to 90 percent of all dance music out there uh, over the last 30 years. And what we've done is we've taken uh, a voice from the Prophet 6 directly and put it into this this little box. Now there's not a Dave Smith synthesizer available for under a thousand pounds so the price of this unit makes it really appealing this is uh, retailing at 550 euros uh, in the UK that's like 480 pounds so for, for that reasonably affordable price you can get full VCO uh, voltage controlled oscillators true analog voltage uh, voltage controlled amplitude and voltage controlled filter so there's no uh, lying with this unit it's truly analog uh, it's a stereo output because we do have a digital effects engine built in on here but that um, four oscillators from the, the Prophet 6 allow us to get really creative and uh, it makes the unit quite broad so we can create rich bass lines, we can create thumping sub bass lines and we can also create lead sounds and um, effects and pads also it's, it's not limited to just bass sounds like some other monophonic synths it really lets you uh, create sounds across the board so let me stop waffling on and let me actually turn the sound up and you can you can hear what it's doing so at the moment we've got a, a 16 step sequence running on this preset that I've just uh, I've just jumped to on the hardware and this is uh, being triggered from the SP16 like I said. Now we've created five user banks that have all got 95 presets in. So in total there are 495 presets on here, each of which have a sequence. So if I scan to the left at the minute you can see I'm in F1 P57. Now we've got five user banks, we've also got five factory banks as well which are duplicates so they're, they're the same thing but it basically means the default presets will always be on the hardware and then you can overwrite them in the user settings in the user user banks so let me scan to the left and actually just demo a couple of these uh, these presets and sequences because these have all got their own that's quite a nice one because these have all got their own sequence in the hardware also there's a lot of inspiration that can be drawn from this unit. Now, if let's say I like this sequence, I like these series of notes, I can actually hit shift and lock this sequence. So I, when I'm scanning through the presets now, the same notes will be played, but with the new sound. Now I'm actually gonna do a bit of menu diving and show you what we can do to our sound in a moment, once I've found something nice. So let me turn off that lock sequence and jump to shift latch you can assign uh, like a quick jump setting so you can save 13 presets onto these keys also so if I hold shift and press latch and jump to key 1 I know I've got a really nice bass sound in there there we go now 
if you've ever seen a Prophet 6, a Davis Smith Prophet 6, there's a lot of control on that hardware. There's a lot of parameter control and a lot of uh, manipulation that you can do. To look at, well, there's way more than the AS1. If you see this, we've really only got six main controls, uh, parameter controls, to, to tailor the sound in view. But I can also jump into the OLED screen, and we've got banks and banks of uh, categories that can be adjusted and manipulated to tailor our sound, which uh, makes it really powerful. The ones we've made available on here are just the ones you might want to use in a live scenario. So Pioneer are famous for, of course, live performance. The, the we're crossing into uh, production boundaries here, and this, this is just like a studio bit of kit, I suppose, but this can also be used in a live, a live scenario. The SP16 receives Pro DJ Link connectivity on a LAN port, so you can actually be DJing on the, the say, the Nexus range, the Nexus 2 setup, and you can send the record box BPM information to the SP16, which will be synced perfectly, and in turn go on to the AS1. So you can use it live also, and that's really what we've uh, we've implemented these on here for. So let me take you through them. Of course, we've got low pass filter here, cut off. And you can start to hear how rich the sound is on this, on this bit of hardware as I increase the cut off. We've got resonant point. Acid. Anyone who's into acid -y sounds, you can make acid sounds with the AS1. Then we've got high pass filter. which we can also use on the SP16, again for live use. And then we've got our envelope controls here, our envelope generator controls. Now, these two hardware parts control the filter envelope and the amp envelope. So as I increase the attack, that's actually manipulating both the filter and the amp, which you can do independently also, and I'm gonna show you in a moment. And then decay and release as well. So. The reason these are, I mean, when you're tailoring a sound, you're going to want to manipulate them independently. But for live use, this is perfect. So I can kill the low end on my, my SV16 and open up the open up the release on the AS1. So let's actually jump in and go do a bit of menu diving on this also. We've got our LFO control over here. However, I'm going to show you that inside the OLED screen in a minute. So let's jump in and actually show you some of the banks. So everything you'd expect to see on a synth, we got oscillator one, control, frequency, shape, and pulse width, and also sync. So frequency, of course, is your pitch. So we can set the frequency, the, the root note of the oscillator one. Let's set that to F and leave it on F, standard F. Then we've got the shape. Now this is a morphing wave shape. So you, you've got triangle, sawtooth, and pulse. But you're not just speci specifying one. Uh, you can morph between them. So as I go from triangle, let's turn it up a bit. You can see it's like a parameter control that we can actually gradually blend into sawtooth. And then as we get past sawtooth, Saw. We're then going into pulse, pulse waveform, and of course, then pulse width will manipulate the width of the, uh, the, the the pulse wave on here. So if we go to zero, it basically kills the completely kills out the oscillator. But as we gradually blend it in, you can tailor that to your how you'd like it to be. Sync is a cool setting. With sync on, both oscillators will re-trigger at the same time. So you can, uh, it can, with some presets and some patches, it can really manipulate uh, and change the, the character of the sound. Then we've got the same controls for oscillator two. And I think oscillator two is set to low frequency because I can hear that so it's really uh, low down on the, on the frequency spectrum. Uh, we've got the same pulse sorry, the same wave shape control, and also a, uh, a fine tune on this. So when I'm on oscillator two, I've actually got fine control, so I can detune both oscillators. You can hear, so it starts to sound a bit more warped as you start to detune it. The next control, or sorry, the next uh, parameter that I'm adjusting is slot. So I'm just gonna turn this down slightly. Anyone who's uh, a fan of vintage hardware or a fan of uh, old school analog synths, 
they're usually a fan of the the way that that the, the character of the sound the, the the synths deliver. You know, old school synths sound great, and they also have uh, a, a, an element of um, inconsistency about them. So the the oscillators can slightly go out of tune, and the, the BPM of, or the uh, the syncing of the MIDI can vary. And that's what we've tried to recreate with this slot control. So it is what we recreated at the minute with slop off. This is a true analog synth, VCI, VCF, VCA. However, it is digitally controlled, so you can have uh, your presets, and you can have uh, the the accuracy of all the MIDI working working really well, and the tuning works really well. But if I increase the slot, you then start to get some of the inconsistencies that you would get in old school hardware, which you can hear now. You can hear it starting to vary a little bit. So that just it's kind of an old school emulator with the slot control. Let's go through. We've now got a mixer control. So I've got oscillator one level, oscillator two level, which is now off. Let's, let's increase that. Sub level and noise. Oh, I just lost my preset. But no worries, let's jump back to it. I'm going to transpose this in real time, slightly up the octaves, just to make it a bit more obvious to you to hear. Maybe not that high. There we go. Leave it on F. Resonates quite well. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna jump back to my mixer again and show you, uh, bring up the noise oscillator. So we've got two voltage controlled oscillators, a sub oscillator and uh, a noise oscillator. So let's bring the noise one back up. Uh, yeah, you can really hear it, a bit of a uh, bit of white noise in us in our synth sound also. The next control we have, low pass filter control. Of course we, we've got the controls on here for the low pass filter, resonance and uh, cutoff, so we don't really need that. Now on the high pass we don't have a resonance control on the hardware, or just in the screen. So let's go to high pass filter and increase the resonance and you'll start to hear that. You can hear the resonance of the sound of the, uh, the the high pass filter. We've also got a, an editor for this for this unit. So what I'm doing now, I'm quite used to this now uh, because I've been using it for a couple of weeks. So I know uh, where each category is when I jump to shift. I can quickly browse between categories and manipulate my sound quite fast. It took a while to get used to it. However, if you're not one for messing around on on hardware, which I think people tend to wave lean towards using the hardware over like a, a computer control but there is an editor for this there's a standalone editor that you can link through MIDI or through USB on your studio computer and it basically looks like a VST and you can manipulate all of these controls in VST form uh, but with the, the, the with the best of both worlds you get the analog sound with the VST control so uh, it also enables you to save your patches load patches and really go to town on, on the hardware and still work in, a, in more of a studio, well, a computer studio environment. Uh, let's actually manipulate the, the filter envelopes on its own. Let's increase the, the attack independently of the envelope generators on here and do the same with the amp envelope. So you can see for live use, it's really useful. When you're using it with the SP16 as well, you can create a dedicated AS1 track. So you can use these six pots on the on the uh, SP16 to manipulate any of the controls I'm talking you through now. So you could have amp envelope with through CC controls on here, as well as filter envelope. You've got two banks of CC controls, so two banks of six pots to control additional controls from what you're doing on here. Uh, we've got glide for... Uh, Kind of the acid -y bending and uh, the glide between notes, which is quite nice. LFO controls. We've also got, as we go through, a whole host of slider controls, which this can be assigned to up to five different uh, elements, including pitch, uh, filter cutoff, uh, VCO on of pitch on both the oscillators. It's uh, it's really um, each preset has different, uh, is set up differently, but you can, of course you can create your own. Now let's jump through and show you the last few controls. Mo whole host of modulation, sources and destinations, so you can go to town with modulating your sound. 
and then of course uh, we, one thing I didn't mention is we've got a stereo effects bank as well so these effects are taken straight from uh, Dave Smith's Prophet 6 as well we've got the bucket bridge delay uh, really nice tape delay let's turn it on and actually show you them so as soon as you hit the effects button it jumps to your uh, effects controls also so you can see at the minute I've got ring modulator turned on now I've got distortion ring modulator and bucket bridge delay on effects bank 1 then effects bank 2 gives you at the minute it's turned off but we've got chorus phaser high phaser low and phaser maestro as well so some of the really uh, sought after effects of the profit range profit 5 and 6 included on here now usually with bass lines I'll stick to the distortions and the uh, the ring modulator is a really nice one but when you're working with pads and creating pad sounds and effects the phaser is, uh, on this is, is unbelievable uh, let's jump to ring modulator turn it on really creative and uh, really nice sounding effects on here I'm just gonna hold it up so you can see the back I'm not sure if you can see the back on there but yeah standard we got our MIDI in and out we got a USB control for USB MIDI and for link to the computer as well as our stereo balance jack outputs a trigger in so you can actually use an audio source or a, um, a, a pedal if you wanted to either trigger the the sequencer or the arpeggiator uh, you can do that through this this input here and of course your headphone control also that is quite a, a long-winded demo on the AS1 available in stores now for 550 euros so Dave Smith Instruments there's not a synth for under a thousand euros nowadays um, so it's essentially the, the, the rawness and the, 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 the warmth and the, the, the high quality sound of the Prophet 6 in a very affordable easy to transport solid metal box the AS1 from Pioneer DJ and Dave Smith <laughs>